Hey folks, welcome to another video from a plain truth info. Today we're going to continue on in history going further back in time, much further back in time. Most in the western states are only familiar with the Christ event back 3000 BC, but have very, very little knowledge of what the ancients have taught us uh, before then. Uh, the ancients where we still can't figure out how they built uh, the monoliths of today here in Belbeck, you can see people we still don't know how they built these structures Egypt the Gaza pyramid here in Baalbek I mean these largest monuments in the world weighing uh, look at this 8800 tons tons 2200 pounds so we're talking almost 20,000 pounds how did they move these things how did they lift these things uh, you can see down here these statues over here we still don't know that today. <clears throat> and so when we say, you know, we're talking modern history, but the ancients knew a lot more than this. They were able to use mind over matter. Uh, and they were into what was called the Yuga cycles. And I want to get into the same as the gold, silver, iron, or bronze, and iron ages is also the Kali Yuga cycles. Uh, and it's ancient Vedic, <clears throat> some of the ancient teachings of old. And here you can see the descending starting from the Golden Age, started 12,600 B.C., ended 9,2700 years. Then there's a tradition period, an overlapping period, descending to the Silver Age. Now this is dumbing down. This is turning from light consciousness towards material, dark, dense matter. Descending Treta Yuga is the Silver Age. That lasted 2,700 years down to 300. Um, and you'll see the Dwarpa Age, the Bronze Age goes down to 4,000 B.C., uh, transitional period of 300 years. And then you'll notice that the descending Kali Yuga Iron Age, now remember the Dark Ages was 500 uh, A.D. Uh, this was the Christ event of the Kali Yuga. Some have it going right to the date of the Christ event. And then we have the uh, ascending out of the darkness, out of the darkest, the hardest metal, the most stuck, the most frozen light in the Iron Age, we come out of the Dark Ages now over 500 years <clears throat> into the Kali Yuga. We're in the traditional or, uh, transitional cycle now, but you'll notice that here the transition starts in 2025 current event time. So that's <clears throat> coming up here in just a few years, but it is difficult. It is Saturnian. It is Aquarian. Saturn is hard lessons learned. It's also Uranus is its ruler planet as well, and that's unconventional change. So we're going to have to change. It's going to be hard, and that's of the mind. Saturn is of the mind, Aquarian mind, working with uh, the communities and institutions to make the change, and that's where we're heading. So let's take a look at these cycles here. Uh, the oldest records uh, recorded of founded of ancient Indian, the four Vedas, told of periods of time frames of what Plato called great years lasting one zodiac cycle of 25,000, <clears> excuse me, 920 years, divided into three periods each of a consciousness ascension and descension in periods of 2,160 years time frame around the zodiac. So 2,160 years times 12 signs of the zodiac and the procession gets us 25,920. So those are the numbers 2,160 times 12, 25,920. Though this seems like large periods, it's nothing compared to the time frame of the Rig Veda's teaching of one life of Brahma. Yet ancient Chinese, Babylonians, Chaldeans, and Egyptians all had similar systems of time measurement and belief, just like geocentrism. We are currently in the age of Pisces, which is two fish. This is why you see the Christians with the fish and the fish miter on the Pope's hat. Since the time of Christ with another 300 years or so to the age of Aquarius. The Hindu cosmology and timeline is the closest to modern scientific timelines and even more might indicate that the Big Bang is not the beginning of everything. Think about a bang, folks. When do you want to put things together? Do you want to blow them up and have the explosion go outward because you're creating? Or do you bring things together and assemble them when you're creating? Big Bang makes no sense. Explosions don't create anything. They blow things up. All right, so the Vedics had a much larger time frame, a much, it blows my mind when I first started getting into their, their uh, Pralaya and Mantavara cycles. So the universe has existed, according to the Vedics, oldest religion, oldest teachings, oldest writings, 155.522 trillion years. And this is just the current cycle of creation and annihilation. 
Before this cycle, there were countless other cycles, and after this cycle, which will end in 155.8518 trillion years' time, there will be countless other cycles, guys. Why are we jonesing about this time? We're here to do our work here on Earth in the material realm. At the beginning of each day of Brahma, he creates everything in the universe. At the end of the day, there's a partial annihilation. Each day, 12 hours of Brahma is 4.32 billion years. So there's a breathing out in creation, in, into creation and a breathing out of reconciliation, annihilation, creation and destruction. <clears throat> Brahma lives for 311 trillion and 40 billion years. So half of that is one creation and then half of that is the destruction. And the Christ event was the middle point. That's why the Christ event is so important. After this time, there's <clears throat> a complete annihilation of this universe and the current Brahma dies. Then there's another Brahman cycle repeats itself. The universe is the smallest in God's creation. This universe, folks, don't jones on things. There are other universes which are thousands and even million times bigger than the universe. So we go into chronology and <clears throat> Roman Catholicism is only 2,700 years old Greek. But we have Turkish, Chinese 4,300, Hindu 5,100, Jewish 5,700. Turkish again, Iran, Egyptian 28,000, old Iran 189,000, Chinese 96 million years old, don't hear about that, and here's the Hindus 1.9 million and 155.5 million years. And if you get into the Hindu, the Rig Veda, and reading, reading these, their books, they, they peel the onion on that. You can see the layers of those years and what the different cycles are all about. So in Hindu cosmology, a universe endures for about 4.3 million years, one day of Brahma or creation, and then is destroyed by fire or water elements. At this point, Brahma rests for one night just as long as a day. This process, named pralaya or cataclysm, repeats for 100 Brahma years, or 311 trillion, 40 billion human years. That represents Brahma's lifespan. <clears throat> it must be noted that Brahma is the creator, but not necessarily regarded as the god of Hinduism. He is mostly regarded as the creation of the god Brahma. We are currently believed to be in the 51st year of the present Brahma, and so about 156 trillion years have elapsed since he was born as Brahma. After Brahma's death, it's necessary that another 100, year, 100 Brahma years pass until a new Brahma is born and the whole creation begins anew. This process is repeated again and again and again. So here's the cycle, and here you've got the years of going from the highest consciousness, the spiritual age, pure light, co-creator with the divine, down to the densest level where we are down here in the material ages. <clears throat> and I want to give you just another how this all works, the, the, as above, so below. The average person takes a breath, about 18 breaths in a minute. So 18 times 60 gives us how many breaths in a minute? That's 1,080 breaths okay in one hour that's half of a cycle of 2160 years of a procession of the equinox you take the 1080 breaths that are in one hour multiplied times 24 hours 24 times 1080 you get 25920 breaths in one day the same as the brahma cycle of plato's great year 25920 years to complete the procession of the equinox of the um, uh, astrology zodiac cycles. Interesting, I find it. All right, so the yoga cycles, ages of man's Kali, Dwarpa, Treta, Satya. So let's get into these. Uh, people lived very simply in the golden age. There was no wars and discord because they had no possessions to fight over. Imagine no possessions, John Lennon. There was no agriculture, but the land produced food of itself. The climate was agreeable. That was from 11500 B.C. to 6700 B.C. Remember, they're building up, throwing up the pyramids. We don't know how they did it. <clears throat> they were highly evolved beings. The age of Satya Yuga, the, now remember they're going down, so now this is the Silver Age, the age of truth and true religion. Everyone in the world is truthful and follower of the only religion in the world, the Vedic religion. The Yuga lasts 1.7 million years, and the lifespan of humans is up to 100,000 years. Now, the one above them, they're light beings, so they can exist forever if they want. So the age is uh, characterized by virtue, wisdom, religion, and practically no vice or ignorance. Humans do not hate or envy each other, nor do they feel ever feel anxious, fearful, or threatened. They solely worship the one supreme personality of Godhead, hear the one Veda, obey the one law, and practice the one religious process, 
meditation on the supreme so then we're going down here into the bronze age the introduction of ignorance takes place in this age the vedic religion uh, is the only one in the world that lasts the yuga cycle lasts one point almost three million years lifespan of humans is down to ten thousand years so going from a hundred thousand down to ten thousand vices introduced the good qualities that human had in sati yuga reduced by one third People introduce religious rites, sacrifices, and ceremonies. They start to act with fruitive desires, expecting a reward for their work and religious activities. And then we go down into the Dark Ages, the bottom here, and this is the bottom of the cycle here. We're talking the Kali Dwarpa Yuga cycles here. So then we go down to the Kali Yuga, the age of irreligion and ignorance, willful ignorance, I would say. There's a complete decline in religious principles. In the very, few th very first few thousand years, there are many religions which will gradually completely disappear from the face of the earth one by one. Now, this is 770 to the Christ event through 1700 AD. The Yuga lasts 432,000 years, and the lifespan of humans is up to 100 years. Sound familiar? Only one-fourth of human uprightness remains and gradually reduces to nil as the age of progresses. The most degraded of the four ages, Kali, literally means quarrel and hypocrisy sound familiar in this age men are short-lived have less intelligence they are lazy in performing their spiritual duties and exceedingly slow to surrender to the Lord they are misled frustrated and above all always disturbed the qualities of the religion truthfulness cleanliness forbearance and mercy and the qualities of life intelligence duration of life and bodily strength and beauty all diminish we are currently 5,000 years into Kali Yuga now remember the Mayan calendar, that was December 21st, 2012. That was a calendar over 5,000 years old, predicting that date when we were transiting across the Great Milky Way's hemisphere. Um, the Mayan calendar has 13 different time divisions relating to varying degrees of consciousness where vibrational frequencies increase as we ascend above the, our galaxy, the Milky Way's galactic center. The fact that they had predicted this time frame of Earth's position in the heavens so accurately so long ago is incredible. But that is only a small time frame of their overall reference to existence. And here again, the Mayans have time frames that go up to 23 million years. Each of the cycles is composed of 20 of the next shorter cycles, with the exception of the tune, which consists of 18 unal of 20 days each. This results in a tune of 360 days, which maintains approximate alignment with the solar years over the modest intervals. The calendar comes undone from the sun five days every tune and then here we have uh, from uh, Susan V. Sir, Susan Ferguson, Ferguson <clears throat> excuse me um, meta, metaphysical musings now remember going back to the Rig Veda uh, the Vedic teachings the Rig Veda describes our ancient progenitors as weaving the universe with our cosmic sacrifice Yana the universe is interwoven in the vaults of heaven on a shuttle wheels backwards and forwards by the rays of God, by the thread extended, drawn out, spreading on every side. The acts of hundreds of gods, the world is woven. Although Sanskrit term yana is usually taken to mean sacrifice, modern scholars have said that it is unfortunate that this word has been translated as sacrifice because the real meaning is the transformation of one form of energy into another, or sacrifice to the sacred. Now, Tesla showed us that everything is energy, vibration, and uh, frequency. They use a heart paddle, an a, a electro, electromagnetic stimulator when somebody has a heart attack to bring them back to life. Electromagnetic beings. Sounds travel through all material substances. Sound is composed of longitudinal waves, and light is composed of transverse waves in an electromagnetic field. Sound waves require a solid, liquid, or gaseous medium. Light waves travel through empty space or the ether. It's not empty. Light can travel in a vacuum, but sound cannot exist in a vacuum because there's nothing to oscillate. Sound waves travel a million times slower than light waves. Sound is vibration, and vibration can be quantified. I am suggesting that the meters in the ancient Rig Veda verses are the remnants of quantified vibrational frequencies, formulas in sound used by the beings who colonized our planet Earth with their advanced technology and made Earth habitable for the various races they cultivated here. So, each of these meters correlates to numerical quantifications. So, sound vibration, consciousness rising, this was spiritual language that we've lost. That's why they want to get us dumbed down with 
Spanglish, English, you know, all this eubonics, everything else about this language that we language in because it's, it's, it means nothing. It has no spiritual value. So to sum it up here, what I'm feeling is that the Rishis were te themselves participants in the creation of life on planet Earth. Hmm, wouldn't that be fun? Be part of Earth's creation. Recreate, recreate. Either they were actually members of the ancient colonizing beings, the, uh, as I believe the Angarasis were, or they elevated themselves to positions that made them somewhat equal to their progenitors. This earned equality gave them the right to be taught the subtle mechanics of using sound to generate form, which may very well have been how they created the pyramids and these massive, massive monoliths that we still can't figure out how they did it today. All right, a little plain truth, a little history lesson on the Kali Yugas, the ancients, uh, that we have been here a long, a long time, and we're going to be here a lot longer. We're just raising consciousness into this new type of cycles here. Um, I do recommend a couple of these books here. Let me get these up. This book here, The Yugas, Keys to Understanding Our Hidden Past, Energy, Energy Age, and Enlightened Future, is a very good book. All right, Plain Truth out. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Um, love one another, and we'll catch you next video. Peace. 1000 BC, but have very, very little knowledge of what the ancients have taught us uh, before then. Uh, the ancients where we still can't figure out how they built uh, the monoliths of today here in Belbeck, you can see people we still don't know how they built these structures egypt the gaza pyramid here in Baalbek. i mean these largest monuments starting from the golden age started 12,600 bc ended 9,2700 years then there's a tradition period an overlapping period descending to the silver age now this is dumbing down this is turning from light consciousness towards material dark dense matter Descending Treta Yugas, the Silver Age. We say, you know, we're talking modern history, but the ancients knew a lot more than this. They were able to use mind over matter. Uh, and they were into what was called the Yuga Cycles. And I want to get into the same as the Gold, Silver, Iron, uh, Bronze, and Iron Ages is also the Kali Yuga Cycles. Uh, and it's ancient Vedic, <clears throat> some of the ancient teachings of old. And here you can see the descending... Hey folks, welcome to another video from a plain truth info. Today we're going to continue on in history going further back in time, much further back in time. Most in the western states are only familiar with the Christ event back three in the world, weighing, uh, look at this, 8,800 tons, tons 2,200 pounds. So we're talking almost 20,000 pounds. How did they move these things? How did they lift these things? Uh, you can see down here these statues over here. We still don't know that today. <clears throat> and so 